What's going on, everybody? It's David from the 80s, and you're now entering the Cinema Chop Shop, so park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, and the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you'll see a Patreon account. If you click it, you could become a member. All you got to do is try and recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to, so click the link. Now, with that being said, we're here today to finally review Spider-Man No Way Home. This is a, what, a John Watts directed movie. He directed the other Spider-Man movies, and he directed... What is it? Cop car and clown, I believe. So, with that being said, this is the long-awaited movie that everybody's been freaking waiting for, including myself. And let's go ahead and get into this spoiler-free review. I ain't spoiling nothing because this is one of the movies that I believe shouldn't be spoiled. Um, at least not yet. Uh, uh, without at least without your permission, you know. So, let's get into it, right? First and foremost, um, this movie has been awaited by everybody. I mean, everybody's been waiting for this damn movie for the whole year. As soon as there's been so many rumors, so many leaks, so many things talked about, so many if, ands, or buts, and it was really good to finally see if any of these things or leaks finally came into fruitation. Uh, let's go a little bit into the synopsis. A lot of synopsis has been revealed from the trailer, so all of this information is public knowledge. You have Spider-Man, whose identity was revealed by Mysterio, so he asks Doctor Strange to cast a spell. Uh, he does some little kid shit, bothering Strange while he's doing the little spell. And then this ends up opening up some sort of multiverse, multiversal event that had a couple of people sneak in. And we already know from the trailer that the villains, the people that sneak in are the lizards, Sandman, Electro, um, and the Green Goblin, right? We know that these people have entered into the, the battlefield. You get what I'm saying? So... These aren't leaks. These are public knowledge. Everybody knows this shit, right? If you've seen the trailer, you know it exists. Um, so that's where I'm going to stop with, with there. So basically, Peter Parker, Tom Holland's character, is supposed to go around and he's supposed to capture these villains and send them back to the respectable universe. Now, um, let's talk about the things that I didn't like first. All right, the music, the music, in my opinion, was pretty mediocre. It, wasn't, it didn't have that Sam Raimi dope-ass uh, Spider-Man uh, sound score that we're used to. Um, I, I don't think any of these uh, these Watts videos have had that type of musical background yet. Um, but then let's get into like the nitty gritty. Um, Tom Holland's character. The problem with Tom Holland, Holland's character in all of the MCU films, it's been the fact that he hasn't really been Spider Man. He's been kind of a weenie fied version of Spider Man. He never really felt like. He fit the bill or fit the shoes of Spider-Man. He's always been kind of like, I, I guess like Spider-Man year one type shit, you know? And it never really felt like he was too childish for me, like throughout the, his whole film. And I was just hoping that once I see this film that, you know, he was going to finally, you know, man up in a way. And towards the end of the movie, I really feel like we're finally seeing that matured Spider-Man finally. Uh, but you do have to deal with the immaturity from the beginning of the movie and then also, you know, the plot point, which is him being so childish and interrupting Doctor Strange's magical spell, right? Which is another problem I have. Uh, the fact that I don't... I know why they had to do this, right? I, know, I understand why they had to do it. But I, was, I never was too big a fan of the whole, like, you're irritating Doctor Strange while he's doing the spell... And it opens up some sort of multiverse thing. And because of your childishness, you cause a catastrophic event that can possibly destroy the world and life as you know it. And, you know, you could get people around you hurt because you're being fucking childish. And I really thought that was a stupid plot point. Uh, I, I'm not really digging that. They could have tweaked that and made that a little bit better. Um, but it got us where we needed to go. So I guess, you know, Um other than that, is there anything else I didn't really like? Um, the plot point, Peter Parker, and eh, Tom Holland's annoyingness. Oh, the jokes. This movie is riddled. And when I say riddled, I mean literally like filled to the cup, filled to the brim with jokes, right? Some of them hit, but a lot of them miss. It feels a little bit too jokey, especially like when... You have like the level of seriousness that's being exploited in this film or is being portrayed in this film, and you have main characters being kind of jokey. I get it, Peter Parker's character is kind of a goofball, but at the same time, Peter Parker's character can get freaking serious 
when the time comes. So it's kind of weird when you're seeing this character constantly joke around. Also, I wasn't too much of a fan of him um, needing Ned and um, Zendaya's character, uh, her Mary Jane Watson interpretation or whatever the hell her name is, MJ. Um, I'm I'm not very happy about them being kind of like sidekicks and being kind of uh, helping him along the way. Like it feels like this Spider-Man is way too dependent on people and it's kind of, it's kind of weird, you know, um, but, and then I guess it kind of plays a part in the end, but that's a, that's a conversation for another day. Um, let's get into the good. Now, fucking Alfred uh, Molina coming back was top tier shit. Like, you know, Dr. Octopus, honestly, is one of the most comic book accurate characters that we've ever had in a superhero film to date. You know, like he plays a hell of a Dr. Octopus. And I loved every second he was on the film. But there's somebody that just snatches the spotlight even more. And that's William Dafoe. William Dafoe fucking owns this movie from beginning to like from once he's introduced all the way to the end. William Dafoe owns this damn movie. And every second, he honestly made me really appreciate his character a lot more. Because I'm not going to lie. I used to shit on the old school Green Goblin. Like, I hated the way that he looked. But now, like, hearing his dialogue again, hearing his interpretation of the character, seeing how he brought that character to life, I'm kind of second guessing all that crit criticism that I gave him. A lot of my criticism mostly lied in the freaking design of the character. But now thinking back on it and, and thinking about his character, like he was a fucking sinister character and he's such a sinister character in this movie. You know, he is pretty fucking dope, you know. Um, this movie is does have a lot more action in it. Uh, you will see a lot more uh, Spider-Man fight scenes. Um, there's a lot more web swinging. And honestly, again, like I brought up earlier... I really feel like Spider-Man kind of matures at the end of this movie and we're not going to see that childish ass Peter Parker anymore. We're going to see him kind of like step it up and kind of become a man now, actual Spider-Man. So I thought that was really cool too. Um, just the fact that you're just bringing in these old, these older characters from different movies and the nostalgia factor just plays high on this movie. Like it, it plays into this movie a lot, you know, and they, they, they don't, they don't let it slip, you know, when when they have a chance to kind of hit you with that nostalgia factor. Um, let me just tell you. Um, another character that I like, surprisingly, is Ned. Uh, Ned's character throughout the films has grown on me. I'm not going to lie. His character was a, always that comic relief, and he never really hit me like that. But you know what? To be honest with you, Ned's been kind of growing on me. So kudos to Ned for that. MJ's character... She's kind of annoying the shit out of me. Like, I never was really a fan of Zendaya's uh, interpretation of MJ. And still to this day, I'm still not a fan of her character, her interpretation of MJ. It's kind of annoying. It's whatever. I'm not going to really, like, play too much into it. Um, this movie also lacks... This movie also has, like, a really lackluster... Um, what's the word I want to say? Uh, every Spider-Man movie has that... Thing he's supposed to learn. You get what I'm saying? Like every single Spider-Man movie has the the thing that he's supposed to learn. He's supposed to learn something in every movie. And I feel like, sure, the message at the end of the movie, the the lesson that's supposed to be learned, it's a great lesson. But at the same time, it's kind of like something that he should already know. If, if you get what I'm saying. Um, but again, kudos to them for doing it. Uh, they play this movie up very well. It's one of the better freaking MCU Spider-Man movies. Probably, it's actually one of the best MCU Spider-Man movies. But this movie in no way possible is dethroning Spider-Man 1 and 2, the Raimi versions, whatsoever. Uh, also, this movie has two um, cutscenes, so you guys want to wait for the end of the movie to roll. And let me just go ahead and just give this movie a grade. So here on the Cinema Chop Shop, we grade movies in two, three ways. Sorry, three ways. Either you get bodied and sent to the bowels of hell, and I tell you your movie was whack, trash, basura, all that good shit. Or I say your movie was meh, which means it's mediocre, not some minnows, mid, mid range jumper, all that shit. Or I tell you that your movie was will be spared, which means it's great, it's dope, you should go watch it. I had fun with it, etc. Blah 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 blah. Right? And I honestly, for what this movie is, I really think this movie is going to be spared. <laughs> He 
ain't earned a death. He ain't earned a death at my hands. God's only man, spared by the butcher. Help! Yes, you heard it, folks. I am going to spare this movie. It's definitely one of those movies that you want to see. It is a big blockbuster movie. Uh, sadly, I didn't get to watch it in Dolby, but me and my wife enjoyed ourselves immensely. We watched this movie. Uh, it had so much nostalgia, so many callbacks and things like that. It was fun. It was like reliving, you know, our early child, uh, our teenage years all over again, watching a good old-fashioned Spider-Man movie, you know, with the Alfred Molinas and the William Defoe's. It just brought back a lot of memories. And watching this movie... I don't know if they de-aged them or anything, but damn, they looked like they looked good. Like they didn't look old, decrepit, and wrinkly. You know, they didn't look like some old ass leather. They actually looked pretty damn decent. So, like again, I had fun with this movie. It was a great movie. I definitely re recommend checking it out. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Go see it right now. And you are now exiting the cinema chop shop. Let me know in the comments section down below if you would disagree with anything that I said. And you are now exiting the cinema shop shop. Hope you guys are having a magnificent day. Adios.